<laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Nope, that's not how this goes. It's Thursday, damn it. Hello and welcome. <clears throat> welcome and hello, you guys. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. I had a little bit of like a panic moment, maybe 30 seconds before the stream started. Don't worry. We'll talk about that way later in the vlog way later in the vlog. So, you know, be sure to stick around for that. Anyway, I have a full on action packed vlog for you guys tonight. For anybody watching on the replay, all those timestamps, they're going to be the first pinned comment right underneath this video. My main man, Jeremy V, haven't seen him in the chat, but I have so I have so much confidence in Jeremy V. There's going to be timestamps down there in that first pinned comment, but welcome you guys. Yo, yo, a to ya. Gates open. Come on in. Uh, we're going to hang out tonight. We're going to drink beer. We're going to vape stuff. We're going to go through another retro freaking box. All right, let me do the rundown real quick before I'm just so excited. I just get so excited every vlog day, you know, let me do a quick rundown, Jim. Uh, beer, definitely 100%. What I've been vaping. Absolutely. I have some mail and I think there's one Christmas gift in here as well. We're going to be opening that. I got some mail. We got uh, the retro vape box number nine. Now this retro vape box, it is sealed. It's just taped down. I haven't even peeked inside of it. In all of the other retro boxes, when I get to it, it's like the top layer is not really a surprise to me. I go, oh yeah, I already looked at all this stuff because, you know, I took a picture for the thumbnail and I kind of rummaged around already. This going in completely blind, completely blind retro box number nine. This is the last retro box. I can't believe we've gotten through all of them. This is the last retro box, you guys, before we get into... The Tackle Box, and The Tackle Box is where the oldest of the oldest of the most retroiest of the oldest, most retroiest vapes, they, they all live down there. They all live in the, uh, they all live in the uh, Tackle Box. Hang on. Why does, why is, why is OBS dildos? Why is that? Why did that happen? I hate it. I hate OBS. Anyway. Okay, I had a little bit of a panic moment, but we're good. We're sailing right along. Anyway, I appreciate you guys being here. Yo, yo, a to ya. What's up, Grim Army? Um, so like I said, Thursday. <laughs> we start at the beginning again. <laughs> so like I said, it's Thursday. Where did I even leave off? What I want to do right now, right out of the gate, is I want to do that thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. Yes. So this is that one thing. Right now, I'd like to hear from Sean Crew. Jones, what say you, Sean? Hey, Nick, Sean Crew Jones here. Uh, just wanted to uh, shout you out, as a matter of fact, and uh, would like to get a shout out too for my fiance Tammy, um, who uh, converted to vaping after being a smoker for years, and I owe a lot of that to you because uh, you converted me. So it trickles on down the line like that. And uh, just got my Grim Army hat in the mail today. Appreciate that, and um, that's about it, man. Stay metal, stay good, hang ten. Love you, brother. Peace out. Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck yeah, Sean. Fuck yeah, Sean. First, thank you so much for the kind words. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. We're shouting out Sean's fiance, Tammy. Here's a fist bump for you. For you, Tammy. Yeah, fuck yeah. Stay metal. Grim Army hat looks good on you. It looks great. I should be wearing my Grim Army hat tonight, but it just got too dirty. I always pick one hat. Whenever we do a run of hats, I pick a hat and it becomes like my hat. And I wear it like every fucking day. And it's like sweat stains and it's perfectly contoured to my head. And I'm like, this, this is my hat. And it was a Grim Army hat. And I did a bunch of... Uh, yard work while I was wearing it, you see, and it's just sitting upstairs and it just looks like I just drug it through the Nevada desert. Just, it's just the dirtiest fucking thing of all time. So it's whatever. Maybe I'll have to pick a new Grim Army hat, but thank you very much, Sean. Crew Jones, hashtag rad racing. Um, if anybody else out there has a video similar to Sean's that they'd like to see featured, in this here vlog video program, you can send them on over to me. It's nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, uh, that one thing. Just mark your subject, that one thing, or, you know, whatever, your favorite thing, or, hey, I have a video for you, or here's my video, or I've attached a video. I don't know. Something, something like that. Something like that. But uh, appreciate that, Sean. Appreciate that very much, Sean. Now, moving forward into the vlog, before we can even talk about what I've been vaping, before we can really get anywhere, I got this. Yeah. You know what this is? 
This is a Jets mug because it's time to do some beer with the really long beer bumper. What we're going to be tasting tonight comes from Belching Beaver Brewery. This is out of uh, Southern California, San Diego, California, to be exact. This is their peanut butter milk stout. We've had this beer on this vlog a few times, a bunch of times in the past, easily a bunch of times in the past, but I got a gift. I got a gift. Everybody remember JBC? Yeah, Jennifer Burger Coleman. She's one of my favorite people on earth. Uh, she will randomly text me every once in a while and just say, Hey, how you doing? What's going on? I'm like, Hey, JBC chilling, you know, keep fighting that good fight. Uh, she's a nurse up there in Northern California. Anyway, she sent me a care package of some beers and a six pack of the belching beaver peanut butter milk stout was included in there. So I can't not, I love this beer. I'm a big peanut butter fan in general. You know, I'm a big peanut butter fan. I, I go, I go to the peanut butter Facebook group. I visit the... <laughs> I visit the peanut butter subreddit, you know, uh, it's our peanut butter lovers hashtag nothing weird about that, but this is the peanut butter milk stout. It's, it's a delicious beer. I've had it a billion times, but we're drinking it tonight in the good old fashioned jets cup. I always feel like we have a better vlog, man. When we got the jets cup going, I always feel like we have a better vlog. Now that honestly doesn't look like quite enough beer to get me through this vlog, does it? I might have to get another one. I might have to get another one, vaping case. It might be a two beer kind of night, vaping case. Appreciate you being here. Uh, anyway, I know exactly what to expect from this. If you haven't had it, it's it's incredible. It's Belching Beaver's uh, peanut butter milk stout. Cheers, guys. Yeah, it take it smells like peanut butter before you even get it to your mouth. Before you even get it to your mouth, it smells like peanut butter. You can smell, it smells like rich, peanutty peanut butter. I do too, Zach. I'll just, fingers in the peanut butter jar, just ugh. peanut butter, give it to me. Dwayne too, maybe not with the fingers thing with Dwayne. I don't know what Dwayne's peanut butter habits are, but he is a big, he might be a bigger peanut butter fan than I am. I don't know about that. Mm. Uh, it's peanut buttery, it's delicious. I really wish I had some of the Vinyl and Vapor PB party to vape with this, um, but I don't. One thing that I do have that I think is gonna go pretty well with it. Well, first thing, let's try a boring mouth to lung tobacco. This is Torque 56, it's my favorite tobacco from Halo. Yeah, sure, I mean, that's fine. Tobacco goes with every beer. There's not a beer that tobacco doesn't go with. But right now, we're going with Yig. I'll explain this setup in a second, but we're going with Yig. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Man, that's not as good as I was expecting. I was expecting greatness. If I had some PB party here, this would be one of the best beer pairings basically of all time. PB party with peanut butter milk stout from Belching Beaver. What a fucking delicious beer. Highly, 10 out of 10. Would recommend if you like peanut butter. If you don't like peanut butter, Disco Potato, what do you think? You like peanut butter? If you like peanut butter, <coughs> get on this Belching Beaver train. Belching Beaver. <coughs> <laughs> Completely unplanned, yet still very gross somehow. Anyway. That's beer. We got some beer. We got a beer. Don't worry. I have another beer waiting in the wings. The problem is I don't want to drink two beers on the vlog because after the vlog, what we've been doing lately is the the, the cool kids club, like uh, yo yo cool kids club, like discord video chat hangs. And when Poon Sauce gets in there, he's a young guy. So he's like, Grim Green, get another beer. Grim Green, get another beer. Hey, go get another beer. Hey, go get another beer. I'm having another beer. You should have another beer. You want to have another beer with me? Let's have another beer. Let's just have one more beer. One more beer. Let's have another big beer. And at the end of a Thursday night, it gets to be like 11 o'clock at night. I haven't done any of my work and I have Poon Sauce to blame for making me drunk. It's all his fault. So I'm going to keep this to one beer. Damn it, Poon Sauce. Let's do some super chats.
Yeah, that's it. That's all you get. Carl, that's very gracious of you, Carl. Hey, Nick, I just wanted to say thanks for everything. You're an inspiration. My wife, Tammy, and I just want to wish you and Casey a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas back at you. We're big fans of Christmas over here. Big fans. Trey Watt. Yo, yo, vlog day, bro. Yo, yo, to you, Trey Watt. Appreciate you being here. Andrew, yo, yo, from Australia. Type 2 woo. That's right, type 2 woo. You, you say woo every time you say type two. <laughs> type two woo. Appreciate you, Andrew. Kevin, that's very gracious of you. My birthday was Monday. You're 44. My son, Zach, turns 10 today. Can we get a bump and a song? Oh, Kevin Chocolate, you don't have to twist my arm to sing happy birthday. We're all, we, literally, we are all going to sing with you. In fact, if you sing happy birthday with me while we're singing happy birthday to someone, Tell me in the chat. Tell me like in the comments down below. If you're watching on the replay and you're like, I sing happy birthday every time, comment down below. I'd like to know how many people I have in my happy birthday chorus. Okay, ready, everybody? <clears throat> ready? Hang on. I need a baton. Happy birthday to you, Kevin Chocolate. Happy birthday to you, Kevin Chocolate. Happy birthday to Kevin Chocolate and his son, Zach, who turns 10 today. Happy birthday to you. Fuck yeah, Kevin Chocolate. Happy birthday to you and happy birthday to your boy. That's fantastic. Southern Comfort. Don't panic. I'm here. Okay. Whew. Southern Comfort. I was worried. I was like, is he going to be here or is he out on his bike getting tail? It was one of those two things. That's it. So what's the name of the Imperial Stout you like? Uh, many. <laughs> I like many Imperial Stouts. One of my favorite, go buy this one. Go buy Old Rasputin's Russian Imperial Stout. Old Rasputin's Russian Imperial Stout was literally like the beer that sent me down the craft beer like freeway. I had never had anything like it before. I was talking when I was back when I was at Starbucks, I was talking to my boss, Doug, we we're talking about beer. I was like, yeah, it's, I just drink whatever, you know, Takati, it's cool. Whatever's in the fridge, Corona's, it's all good. He's like, you need to get into some better beer. <laughs> you know, so he starts telling me about all these beers. He says, on your way home, you're going to go buy Rayleigh's and you're going to stop at the grocery store and you're going to pick up a four pack of Old Rasputin's Russian Imperial Stout. It's expensive. It's going to be like $26, but it's the best, four best beers you'll ever have. And it just, it blew me away. It changed my brain, uh, you know, much like nicotine does. And uh, just loved it. Loved it ever since. Get on at Southern Comfort. Matt Sinister, just want to give a shout out to the Stooges. Their friendship is helping me through a difficult time. Love you guys for having my back. Fuck yeah, Matt Sinister. That's what I like to see. Stooges and Matt Sinister coming together. Are you guys forming a new stable? Is that what's going on? You guys, <laughs> you guys are going to go up against Evolution? You're going to go up against the Four Horsemen? All right, Big Lou. Happy holidays, Nick. I enjoyed the last Thursday vlog. Big Lou, I appreciate you, man. You've been around forever. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you fighting the good fight, keeping that vape life alive, Big Lou. But uh, happy holidays to you as well. Merry Christmas. Whatever you want to say, that's what we celebrate over here. So now that that is kind of out of the way, let's just talk about a couple things that I've been uh, that I've been vaping. It's gotten. It's gotten. It's gotten a little bit out of hand here, you guys, with the what I've been vapings. Uh, I have too much stuff on my desk and then I created a new area on my desk called the bench. And that's where we'll get there in a second. Uh, K fun light 2019 K fun light plus 2019 sitting on top of the Haas tour. Uh, halo torque 56 is on the inside of that. As you already saw, this is that, uh, D <laughs> whoa, that was gross. The DF 60 from, uh, Remember Digiflavor from back in the day? This is the DF60 with the Type 2 RTA and an old uh, Vicious Ant drip tip. Yig on the inside of that. Yig hanging in there hard with the mix and the Mike Vapes intake MTL. That's filled up with Psycho Crawler. That's been actually really awesome. Uh, Argus, the Vupu Argus. Both the Vupu Argus and the Drag Max or Dra Yeah, this is the Drag Max, right? Both the Argus and the Drag Max have just hung around. On my desk, I put them in the dugout, you know, I put them on the bench and they just find their way back for some reason because I just really like the PNP coils and I love swapping the tent. It's just, I like the little Vupu uh, ecosystem that you get into there. 
uh, Melon Punch, Melon Punch in both of those. And the only billet box that's sitting on my desk currently is, uh, is Bluegrass. It's Bluegrass with the honeycomb doors. It's Bluegrass with the honeycomb doors and the vape snail on the inside. Six milligram pony on acid. Oh my God. It's wonderful. It's delicious. It's delightful. That's the only billet box that's been sitting on my desk. The other two billet boxes are in no man's land right now. One of them just has the Aspire Nautilus Mini, but that's coming out soon to put the bridged 1.2 in it because I somehow bought two of them for some reason. In fact, I need a billet box expert. I need a bridged expert. One of them came like this, and one of them came like this, but I believe these are the same product on the inside. Maybe this is the original. Maybe this is the 1.2. Uh, regardless, I, I bought both of them. I mean, they look the same. I've torn them down, and all the parts are the same. The engravings, like on the actual bridge, are a little bit different. The panda's bigger on one than on the other. I, I'm not super steeped in wicked bridged stuff, so... Anybody out there? You out there, Potato? I need some help. <laughs> I need some help. And then lastly, it's Jake Scrapwood's mod sitting here with the Nest RDA on it. And I'm going to be doing this Nest RDA for the build stream on Monday. And it's mesh, you guys. I know. It's weird. It's mother trucking mesh in here. This is the only mesh RDA that I like. It's the only mesh RDA that has lasted longer than one day on my desk, but this is a uh, 0.3, uh, 74 watts rip. I'm almost up to 95 watts, bro. <sighs> Apart from the airflow being catastrophically bad, the rest of this is really very cool. And I think they did a good job. <sighs> surprisingly, surprisingly cool. But that's really like what I've been vaping, vaping. Okay. Now, I'm wrong. Last one. It's the, it's one of the original Grim Army Hexomes. This is the version two when they switched to aluminum boxes. But I dug this out of storage and it's sitting with the Turk V2 on top and some Turk pumpkin. And there is, this might, this might actually be an empty bottle sitting right here. I want this to be like my winter Christmas vape. And so I've been rationing it because it's so good. Padded case is the newest Grim Green. It's the same, but packaging. Thank you, Disco Potato. High five. If you didn't hit your screen, you're letting me down, Disco Potato. I'm just kidding. Okay, good. Well, that's good to know. So I might end up giving one away, and I'm going to build one and keep one. This, is, this has been my jam. I love this pumpkin aff. It's so wintry and Christmassy and delicious. And so... Turk told me, he's like, hey, I'm going to send you a bunch of 60 mil bottles to give away for your patrons. And I'm like, cool. I'll just wait and I'll steal one of them. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll steal a 60 mil and just vape it. And it was getting like, I knew he was having stock issues, like having a hard time keeping it actually in stock. So the other day on the yo-yo stream on Wednesday, I just went to the Turk website and I'm like, it's in stock. It's in stock. So I just bought one, two 120s of it because I don't want to run out because it's just so good. That wasn't even a real sip. That was like a fake sip. But sitting on the bench, it's like stuff that is supposed to be getting reviews. Some stuff that's just like this Asvape hit of ink is over on the bench because I accidentally put 12 milligram in it. And it's just a little bit too strong. Uh, the Chroma Z has been sitting on the bench forever. It has never made it quite to the desk like as a permanent fixture. I think I'm going to review it soon because here's the thing. It's not bad but it's their first generation of like leather cutout devices. And I know it's going to get better, but I think Inakin's off to the, off to a good start here. Cubano on the inside. Oh yeah. I opened up this for some reason. It's the Vaporesso swag two kit from like years ago. I thought, Oh, I'll have a lot of fun with that. And I put it together and I don't really like it. Uh, I got a T-Rex here that I'm definitely never going to review. I, this thing is the goofiest of the goofiest things of all time. And it's just, it looks like a giant jewel. And I hate that, that it looks like a giant jewel, A. But it does have a pretty cool little, like, you press and then you can flip top. Boop, boop, fill it that way. And you kind of press and lock it back into place. Filling system's kind of cool. I don't know. It vapes okay. It's just so dumb. 
I just think this thing is so dumb, but it's whatever. It works. Now, what arrived just yesterday from you, well, is the Eggloss. The Eggloss. This is the most poorly named product in the history of America. It's got a banana on the inside, that banana moon pie. It's basically a Vaporesso, you know, uh, what was the name of that thing? Little help. Line. Line. Vapor. Uh, Vupu. Uh, mother. Fa- Vinci. Vupu Vinci. This is basically a Vupu Vinci minus the auto switch feature. But I don't know. You well, it's rocking pretty good. Now, this is what I got last week in that big silver case. I don't even know if I'm allowed to show this yet. I got in trouble from Geek Vape last week. Um, because I opened that big silver case. <laughs> they sent me the big silver case with new Aegis stuff and I opened it up on camera and then, you know, I, I eventually get the message. It's like, hey, you can't do that. Can you cut that out of your video? Can you clip that out? And I'm like, no, I can't do that. And they're like, well, can you delete your video? I said, no, I'm, I'm definitely not going to do that. And so then I discovered, oh, well, on YouTube, you can blur it. So there's like two minutes of the vlog last week or two weeks ago that's blurred out because Geek Vape got mad and didn't want me showing the Aegis on YouTube yet. It's the new, it's, it, I'll save my judgments for the video. How about that? I'll just save my judgments for the video. I'll say it's vaping pretty damn good right now. If you've had all the Aegis stuff, there's not a lot of new here, okay? I'm just gonna say that. If you've had the Aegis stuff, there's not a lot of new. Anyway, that's what's sitting on my desk for review and that's really more or less what I've been vaping. If I had to pick one jam, it's going to be the type two and it's going to be the hexome combo. This has just been uh, incredible. Those are, those are my two vapes. If I have to come into my office for any reason at all, grab a vape. Chances are that's what I'm grabbing. Anyway, that's uh that really is more or less what I've been vaping. I'm shocked at how long those Vupu Argus has, has left lived on my desk, but I just really like that auto switch. I've never had an auto switch mod before with a lung. And it's rad. It works really, really well. Works really, really well. Oh, hang on, Michelle Lynn. What do you have to say? Uh, Steph said, oh, okay, yeah, I get you. Thank you, Michelle Lynn. Appreciate you. Um, so let's move forward. Let's get. Let's really get into the meat of this vlog. And by that, I mean some super chats before we do news. That's all you get. That's it. That's all. Sorry. It's just this just what happened um big lou that's right noah oh very gracious vlog day what up grim vaping my gear rta on top of my aegis mini with some twist pink greatest vape youtuber <laughs> to ever exist <laughs> stop that noah you're making me you're making it awkward noah i appreciate that man uh vape kitty how are you doing haven't seen you in a while i went out and bought my boyfriend and i new cali burn g's after watching your review and we love them thanks for all you do let's keep on vaping oh yeah i got i got cali burn g's too i got uh Rosa Brown, Rosie Brown, and uh, the blue guy, they both have something in them. 12 milligram Turkish blend. 12 milligram custard. 12 milligram custard. Appreciate you vaping, kitty. Viking Vapor. Good evening, Sir Nick of the Americas. You know, I almost named my YouTube channel that. That's weird. It's weird that you said that. I was almost Sir Nick of the Americas on YouTube because you immediately... That would have been weird. Be like, I'm Sir Nick of the Americas. I'm here to talk about vaping. Anyway, Kennedy, that's very gracious. Four years smoke-free, November 29th. Shout out to my son, Scott, who lives in San Diego for setting me up with vaping and turning me on to your channel. Been a subscriber since 2017. Fuck yeah. You're, you're all shouted out. You too, you, Kennedy, you're especially shouted out. That's awesome. Appreciate you guys. It's awesome. You don't have to, but you do, and I appreciate it. So what I should do now, let's... I'm really anxious to get to this retro box. So we're going to get to this retro box, but I think what we're going to do now, what should we do? Let's do news. Nope. That's not the news bumper. What are you even doing? Grim green again, stream deck. Actually, hang on first, really quickly, really, really quickly before we get to news. Look, smash that like button. Just punch your computer for me. (laughs) I will never not think that is funny. News and advocacy, yeah. News and advocacy. Whoops. What am I doing? Now we're back. Now we're back. News and advocacy. So I got a few things, uh, just a few quick news, uh, newsy type items uh, that I wanted to mention to, you know, 
get some information out there and get everybody uh, edumacated all on the uh, vapings and goings on and such as. So the first things first, you know what I'm going to say? It's Water Malone. <laughs> Oh, shit, that's funny. Um, that actually came from a fella. I got proper, uh, proper, who did that? Uh, it was a guy named Jeremy Michand. Jeremy, thank you for sending Water Malone my way. I, he, I know he found it on the internet. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate, uh, appreciate the Water Malone. Okay, so you know what I'm going to say here? It's the Veritas cohort study. This is a huge vape study going on, and I want everyone on earth to be a part of it. If you're a current vapor and you've smoked less than 50 packs of cigarettes, you could be a part of this. You could be a part of this big Veritas cohort study. I'll have a link down in the description. Second thing you know what I'm going to mention? You know it's coming. Who Protect. Whoops. Oh, my graphics all effed up in the A. It's too big. It's too big, damn it. Protect your protect the vape mail. There's uh, S1253 is still on the books, still has not got it voted on, but you can do the call to action. You can call, you can email, you can do the whole deal. Uh, it only has a 42% chance of passing, so I think we could really squash this down. I'll have a link down in the description to that call to action. Additionally, if you have some time, Go check out the new uh, go check out the new Casa website, Casa.org. Yeah, it's all brand new, reinvented, reimagined for a more modern world. Tons of information on there, tons of studies on there. Uh, really, definitely go check it out. Can't can't recommend it enough. Now, another thing you need that you know I'm going to mention. It's coming. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's oh, it's gone. All right, well go go watch. You don't know nicotine. It's out. Uh, it's I don't even have a graphic for it. Man. I don't have a graphic for it, and that's that's a bummer sauce. Let's just show my drawing of uh, our Surgeon General. Go watch, go watch. You don't know nicotine? It's out. It's on the Ibex platform. I literally cannot recommend this movie enough. I'm buying it as a Christmas gift for literally everybody I know, and literally everybody they know, and basically the whole world. Now, the next thing you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention. Besides, you don't know nicotine. It's the Cochrane study. I just want to mention this every week, and I don't mean to drill it into your heads, but this is one of the single best papers in favor of the efficacy of using electronic cigarettes as smoking cessation that has ever existed. This is the gold standard, okay? This is a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials, observational studies, and then they basically do this meta-analysis and you're not gonna be shocked by the conclusions that they come to. We did a big deep dive into this on the, one of the Tuesday Bro News Days not too long ago if you wanna go back and watch it, but it's awesome. This is real awesome science. Um, I also, moving into newer and better things, you guys, um, I think I've mentioned this before on this stream, but I'm not 100% sure. There is a Canadian Vaping Association, and I didn't know that. And maybe I did know that, or maybe I just forgot that, but there is a Canadian Vaping Association, much like our Gregory Connolly American Vaping Association. You got a Canadian Vaping Association up there. I'll post a link down in the description. If you are a Canadian or you are in the Canadian area, try to get plugged in. Like, uh, Try to be a part of this. Support the Canadian Vaping Association because... So I'm going to rehash this a little bit. A few weeks ago... Is this a few weeks ago? Yeah, I think this was like a few weeks ago. Oh, damn it. I'm going to have to do this. Hang on. I was not, I'm really unprepared for this vlog. If you guys can't already tell, I'm hyper, hyper unprepared for this vlog. Okay, so the Canadian Lung Association a few weeks ago put out just some hogwash. And I, I showed this on the screen. And you can read it and just get angry if you want to. E-cigarette vapor contains a number of toxic chemicals. Oh, are you scared yet? Because you should be scared because the point of this graphic isn't to inform you, to help you make an educated decision on what you do or do not want to put into your body. This exists just to scare you. Just to scare you. And what it's supposed to scare you away from is vaping. What it's supposed to scare you towards is cigarettes. Doesn't this sound like it's worse than cigarettes almost? 
almost sounds like they make it worse than cigarettes. Well, look, they like to double down on a bad idea. And this is why I would suggest getting involved with the Canadian Vaping Association, because on that, they posted that on Facebook and then they kind of doubled down again and wrote another little caption for it kind of right underneath that, again, gives us no real information and really just the Canadian Lung Association wants to control Canadians' lives tremendously, and I am not okay with that. We remain concerned about tobacco use via regular cigarettes. Good. You should, because that's what's kill, literally killing people. Tobacco remains the leading cause of death and disease, unfortunately. Yes, combustible tobacco does remain the leading cause of death and disease in the world. However, vaping is not harmless. The vapor is not just water. We strongly urge those who have never smoked or vaped to not start vaping. If you smoke and you are trying to quit, we urge you to explore other cessation methods first. If you are unsuccessful, and you will be, if you're unsuccessful with all other means and decide to vape, please note that vaping is not harmless. And here's the real rage portion of it. The overall goal should be to stop smoking and vaping. Oh, shit. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what your goal was, Canadian Lung Association. I thought you just wanted us to stop the really, really bad, bad, combustible, cancer-causing, COPD-causing, emphysema, stroke, heart disease-causing, combustible tobacco cigarettes. I didn't know that you guys were angry at addiction, just, you know, regardless of the harm, you know, it's not causing anybody harm. You're against it for some reason. This is why this is why we need the uh, this is why we need the Canadian Vaping Association because the Canadian Lung Association the wheels came off that trolley uh, a long time ago much like the American Lung Association you know <laughs> unbelievable so uh, yeah there, there you go um, uh, that's Canada that's what's happening in Canada right now I did have some news out of uh, Lansing Lansing Michigan. What? Oh, here it is. Yeah. Uh, this is some news out of Lansing, Michigan, WLIX in Lansing, Michigan. They posted this on their website. Sparrow revises nicotine free hiring policy. Now, this is something that just God sticks in my craw like you can't imagine. And there, you know, we saw U-Haul do this and Sparrow in Michigan has done this. Now, to be fair, Sparrow is like an in-home care sort of uh, business. You you hire people to stay with and look after, you know, uh, maybe grandpa, you know, uh, or, you know, maybe someone who's sick or can't walk and, and they need help around the house and you hire people from Sparrow to come, to come help you. And so what Sparrow did and what U-Haul did is you are not, you, you will not get a job with any of these companies if you test positive for nicotine, yeah, nicotine, not even smoking. And I could understand smoking. Sure, you don't want caregivers going into someone who might be, you know, they might be have a chance to get sick. They might be immunocompromised. They might be, you know, in a weakened condition. You don't want smokers showing up. I get it. They're going to smell like smoke. They're going to say, hey, I know I meant to help you feed your lunch right now, but I'm going to go outside. I'm going to have a cigarette. Sure. Okay. You don't you don't want smokers giving care. I get that. But the nicotine, nicotine free hiring policy is bullshit. All they're doing is testing you for nicotine. They're literally, if you were a smoker, if you go, yeah, I was a smoker, uh, you know, I smoked for 12 years. Um, I recently quit and I'm chewing nicotine gum now to help me quit smoking. You get punished for quitting smoking. They won't hire you if you're a smoker or you're in the process of quitting smoking, or even if you just chewed nicotine, maybe you just use a patch forever and that's it. And you're like, I quit smoking, but I still need a patch every day of the week. You can't get hired. You might not be smoking anymore, but you can't get hired because they found nicotine in your system. Uh, this is crazy. This is crazy pants to me. So Lansing, Michigan, it says Sparrow has revised its hiring policy in order to allow the hiring of applicants who test positive for tobacco or nicotine. I don't know how you test positive for tobacco. You're just testing positive for nicotine. 
as part of their pre-employment screening process as long as the applicant attends a smoking cessation program. So if you, (laughs) this makes no sense. The free market is fucking weird. This company won't hire you if you have nicotine in your system. So if you're chewing gum and quitting smoking, not only is that not okay and they might not hire you, but if you're quit smoking and you're chewing nicotine gum, then in order to get that job, because you have nicotine in your system, you have to attend a smoking cessation program, even though you're already quitting smoking. Well, good on you, Sparrow. Appreciate that. This change will only not contribute. This this change will not only contribute to the health and well-being of the applicants, sure, but it will also increase job opportunities to area residents at a difficult economic time when people may be facing uncertain job futures. The move will aid Sparrow in hiring new caregivers who are critical to our response in the pandemic. They previously had a no nicotine policy, and now they're kind of bending that. They're saying, well. That ruled out too many people, and now we actually need to hire people. So if, you have, if you're a smoker, nicotine, come on in. We're going to hire you, but you have to attend a smoking cessation program. Now, I don't know. It doesn't say that you need to complete a smoking cessation program. I don't know. Maybe you can chew nicotine gum or vape as long as you go through the program, and then you can still get a job there. I think it's, how is that not discrimination? How is that not discrimination? If you're quitting smoking and using nicotine gum or a vape and you still have nicotine in your system, they won't hire you. That's discrimination. Sorry. Sorry, that's discrimination. I don't see it. I can't possibly see it any other way. That's insane to me. Not the real Gerard Butler in with the super chat. Uh, The hospital I used to work for will not hire anyone who tests for nicotine. They also stopped selling all regular sodas. Diet sodas only. Look, sure. I mean, at a hospital... I could get that, but just the nicotine though, that I don't understand. That I don't understand. I honestly, if you work at a hospital, okay, look, I I don't work at a hospital. I'm not a doctor. I didn't go to, yeah, mandatory smoking rehab. I didn't go to medical school or anything like that. I don't know. If you have a doctor that smokes, if you have a nurse that smokes and they go out for a smoke break when they come back, if they smell like smoke, then maybe sure, that might be a thing. But just the idea that if you partake in nicotine if you ate a fuck ton of tomatoes and then you go get nicotine tested and they're like well you got nicotine in your system you're like all i ate was tomatoes and they're like nope go to a smoking cessation program what the fuck it's just nicotine it's crazy to me anyway i'll put a link down in the description if you want to get some uh if you want to get some rage news uh one more quick thing i wanted to throw out there uh alan fella named Alan Beard posted this. Skip Murray retweeted it. Uh, Some of the vape fam may have noticed a newcomer today. This is on Twitter. Uh, Give him a follow, retweet, and maybe add content to their wiki. So what he's talking about is this on Twitter, the Safe Nicotine Wiki. Sorry, Safer Nicotine Wiki. An information... (laughs) I'm sorry. I am sorry. Look, that just came out. I had no choice. That just, that was, I am sorry. Safer Nicotine Wiki. This is important. Follow these people on Twitter. And additionally, if you click the link in their profile, and here, in fact, uh, let's get Chrome out here. Yeah, Chrome's up here. If you click this nicotine, if you click this link in their profile, it takes you to like their Wikipedia. It's a full-blown, dedicated to nicotine, uh, like Wikipedia, like wiki page. And we need to fill this up with stuff because look, you go here, let's go to like a random page. This is very, yeah, see, look, Bill Gates. Bill Gates and Mike Bloomberg both engaged in the elimination of tobacco in a recent announcement that reconfirms their funding on this. So that's what we have for Bill Gates. Sure, let's go to another random page. Some of them are a little bit more fleshed out than others. Uh, Is harm reduction 100% safe? They have some uh, nicotine questions on here, cancer questions on here. Uh, I think this could be a really great resource. And I think uh, if we can contribute to it in a meaningful way with relevant and accurate information, then shit, this could become uh, this could become a really good uh, a really good resource for us. So I'll post a link down in the description to the Safer Nicotine Wiki as well. That's it, just the Safer Nicotine Wiki. That's all you need. Follow them on Twitter. The website, uh, you know, the, the link is in the profile of the uh, of the Twitter profile. Now then, how's everybody doing? You hanging in there? All right. 
I got one more thing I wanted to mention. We're going to end this news and advocacy segment. We really cranked through it this week, you guys. I'm really proud of myself. Trombone sounds. No, that's just for farts. That's, uh, that's just for farts. Just want to have a vape break, you know, real quick before I get to some science. We're going to end. We're going to end. What does this say, Barbara Burgess, in the chat? Our company has a policy. You can't smoke while on duty, but feel free to walk into client home who smokes or go on an errand to buy cancer sticks for the client. Oh, that's very interesting as well. That's very interesting as well. You know, I had a job uh, when I was a coffee taster at Starbucks, and it was just me and my boss, Doug, and we're just <laughs> slurping coffee like crazy all day long. The, they had a rule that you couldn't smoke cigarettes if you were going to work in the coffee department. Coffee department, and you're a taster, and you're using all of your senses. You just can't smoke cigarettes. And so it, I smoked cigarettes up until the day of my interview, and when they asked me in my interview, they said, do you smoke cigarettes? I was like, no, of course not. Quit that ages ago, you know? I haven't smoked. I don't smoke. And then I got in the car and then I drove home and like smoked a cigarette in the car. And I forced myself basically to quit cold turkey, cold turkey in one day. And then I didn't touch a cigarette for four years. That's not bad. And that was just part and partial to the job because of the sensory, you know, smoke long enough. Everything just starts tasting like styrofoam and smelling like cardboard. And uh, when you need all your senses to evaluate coffee, that's literally like if you don't approve this coffee, like all of these wheels get set in motion. It's like refunds are put out and all this coffee, you know, these pallets of coffee have to get shipped back to the, to the farm in Costa Rica. It's a big responsibility. So you don't smoke. So I wanted to end this news and advocacy with a uh, little bit of science. We got some science. It's time to become Nick guy, the science man. I don't have the bumper. So unfortunately you don't, you don't get to see it, but Jonathan Fools. PhD, who you definitely should be following on Twitter. Uh, he posted a link to this study and said that Juul plus Views Solo has lower abuse liability than combustible tobacco cigarettes, higher abuse liability than nicotine gum, and may provide sufficient nicotine delivery and satisfying effects to support substitution for combustible cigarettes among adult smokers. Well, holy shit. Can you believe that? There's science out there, you guys, that says <laughs> that the, the, the abuse liability for Juul is exceptionally low, lower than tobacco cigarettes. So here's the study. And, uh, you know, this is NIH. It's a big, it's a big, boring study. Exactly like Fould said. Abuse liability assessment of the Juul system in four flavors relative to combustible cigarette nicotine gum, and a competitor electronic nicotine delivery system among adult smokers. How's that? That's a mouthful. I don't know why they have to keep creating these new little acronyms because in this entire paper, JS is Juul system. They had to, they had to shorten a four-letter word into a two-letter word. Juul became JS, Juul system. Okay. So basically what they're trying to look into here is, like it says, it's the abuse liability of it. Um, they don't mention at all how many uh, people were involved in this. They only give us like weird 50% female, 50% male. Okay, I mean, that kind of helps. Doesn't tell us how many people were involved in this. That's fine. Uh, the median age was 41 years old. You go, okay, that, that, you know, numbers, like numbers, numbers would help. 63.6% uh, .6 were white folks. So, you know, if, if that information is relative, really what I would like is the number of people involved in this study. But it says they completed a seven arm within subjects crossover product use study, which I had to look into. It turns out it's a clinical longitudinal study where they are, you're given a specific set of tasks like uh, here, vape this for three days. Okay, now try this for three days. Okay, now try this for three days. Okay, now try this for three days. And then at the end, we all come together and we kind of talk about what was going on. That is what a crossover product use study means. And what they did is they used the Juul and they used flavors. They used tobacco, mango, mint, and cream for the Juul. Um, they used a Views Solo that only came in tobacco flavor. They used nicotine gum, didn't mention a flavor. 
and they used all of these in controlled conditions. And then after each product use, you get a, a nicotine test. They call it a PK test. I can't remember how to pronounce it. It's pharmacokinetics test. They call it a PK test. And really all that does, are you bored yet? Did I bore you? Wake up, wake up, come on. A PK test, all it really does is follows the path of the, that's it's what a PK test is. It just follows the path of whatever you're putting in your body from beginning to end. So if you had an Advil, the PK test on it would be like, oh, it went in your mouth and down your throat and dissolved and then the painkillers were released and blah, blah, blah. And then you, you pee this out and you poop this out and that's the PK of this. That's what they did here. Pharma, pharmacokinetics test. Bored yet? All right, so listen. Here, we don't even need to do this. The conclusions. The conclusions, controlled use of a jewel among adult smokers resulted in nicotine delivery, product liking, and satisfaction levels that were less than that of combustible cigarettes, but generally greater than nicotine gum. What's this tell us? This tells us exactly what the New England Journal of Medicine randomized control trial told us is that they people like it more than gum. <laughs> Has controlled use more satisfaction than, com less satisfaction, sorry, I'm all over the place. Less satisfaction than combustible cigarettes, which is to be expected, you know, generally greater satisfaction than nicotine gum. These results support the conclusion that Juul has lower abuse liability than combustible cigarettes, higher abuse liability than nicotine gum, and may provide sufficient nicotine delivery and satisfying effects to support substitution for combustible cigarettes among adult smokers. So there you go. Thank you, Jonathan Folds, for sending this out to Twitter where I saw it. And we're gonna add this to the ever-growing mountain of data that we have and mountain of evidence showing the efficacy of vaping and electronic cigarettes for smoking cessation uh, empirically. I mean, look, look, this is gonna happen. I've told you this, we're gonna win. And we're adding this, we're adding this to the pile of science, literal, it's a pile. Ask anybody, that's the technical term that they use too, scientists. They say that, they, they say, how much evidence do you have? Pile, we got a pile of it. You wanna see the pile? We got a pile. That's a big deal in the scientific community. I'm actually making a lot of this up. Um, uh, no, we're not gonna do that. Nope, that's where we're gonna end it. We're gonna leave all the rest of that for next week or possibly Tuesday. But that was news and advocacy. Yeah, chemistry with Nick. Chemistry with Nick. You wanna know about pharmacokinetics? I'll, I'll tell you all about pharmacokinetics. <laughs> nonsense that I have to learn to just, you know, follow the tobacco, you know, tobacco control debate. Anyway, I will have links down in the description to literally everything that I talked about. You don't know nicotine. You want to read about Sparrow. You want to read the science. You want to get involved with the American Canadian Vaping Association. You want to leave a comment for the Canadian Lung Association on Facebook. Facebook, feel free. I'll post this link in the chat right now. I want everybody to go comment on this. Nick Guy, the science man. Anyway, that's where we're gonna leave that. Like I said, I'll have links all through the description of this video. Clickable links will be on grimgreen.com. And you can in you know, it's just why that's just where I put everything. I feel like YouTube is the best place to watch the vlog, but I legitimately feel like grimgreen.com is the best place to, if you want to like follow the links. You know, I don't know why. It's just what I uh I stand by it. Look, I don't care. You can't convince me otherwise. So that's good. That's good. You know what I think we're going to do right now is... <laughs> what I think we're going to do now... Oh, advocacy, come on, News and Advocacy. Yeah. Shit. Well, we got a new News and Advocacy again now. Damn it. Okay, so you guys... Here we go. It's the Veritas cohort study. You know, I've mentioned this a thousand times. I'm just kidding. News Let's do, advocacy. oh my God, we have to do news and advocacy again? That's unbelievable. Let's do super chats. Is that too loud, Addy Tooney? Was news and advocacy too loud? Um, uh, where did I leave it? Uh, Seahawks fan, go Seahawks. Uh, what's up from the main Vape Co and Empire Vape Shop crew? 
Fuck yeah. What's up to the main vape crew? I still got some prickly smooth. I appreciate you guys. You got some good liquids out there. If you guys are in that East Coast area, definitely check out Main Vape Co. They make some uh, they make some legit shit. Lee, appreciate your comment. Diet sodas. Fishy. That's very gracious of you. F and love in my type too. Yeah, you are. See you later on the Discord. Yeah, you will, Fishy. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Stan, let's do this. Hashtag do you even build, bro? Obviously not, Stan. Obviously, I don't build and I'm bad at building. <laughs> yeah, let's do it, Stan. I don't care. Frames, what are you doing? Grim is joining us in the shed this Sunday for the Shed Time podcast. Really, Frames, I'm proud of you. That is a real good way. Utilize Super Chats to promote your own podcast. I'm proud of you. I'm going to be on the Shed Time podcast this Sunday. I'm not sure when it releases, but we're recording this Sunday. It's a podcast that uh, Frames and uh, 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 Angry Hippie, can't remember. Angry Hippie? The Violent Hippie? No, he's not the Violent Hippie. He's the Angry Hippie. Frames and Angry Hippie do a podcast, and I'm going to be on it. And, uh, you know, I'll post a link uh, on grimgreen.com. Yo, yo, I sending out the positive vibes and crisp high fives. Frames. I love your Thursday videos. You and Ashton always get me pumped on Thursdays. Pumped on Thursdays, bro. Anyway, appreciate you being here. I would like to, uh, I have some mail and, oh, we're so good on time. Yes. So good on time. Let's open mail. Do, 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 do. So, like I said, I got some mail. You know, it shouldn't be, uh, I don't, it shouldn't be too much. It's only like four boxes. Oh, uh, yeah. I think the, I think I grabbed a citrus scented one. I know Anthony Ramella. I didn't see you here tonight, Anthony Ramella. I don't know Anthony Ramella. Anthony Ramella sent me some new, uh, some new scented garbage bags. Actually, look, can we just have a vape break real quick? Do I need to b- b- build in a bumper for this? Let's, uh, let's vape and listen to Yak. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Any time of year. Dun, 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 dun. I believe I can fly. Oh, yeah. Just love getting a good, a few good rips in, you know? A few good toots in. We're going to open up some, uh, some mail. Sean Typhoon. There it is. Sean Typhoon. Sean Typhoon and the Shed Time Podcast. Frames Janklin, Shed Time Podcast. Do I ever do this? Do I ever stack them all up here? No. Why did I do it now? I don't know. Okay. Let's open up some boxes. Let's see. I got a knife. I got a Rhett's beard knife. Rhett's beard, I didn't see you here tonight. This is one of your knives in action, hot knife action getting used. Uh, love the crap out of these. I like, I just like sharp things that can injure me, especially when I use them incorrectly, like cutting towards myself constantly, constantly cutting towards myself. Ready? I'm about to do it again. Ah! Okay. What do we got going on? Oh shit. That's fucking hilarious. I got an e-fog. That is ridiculous. Okay, so this product is called the e-fog gallop. It's from uh, no idea who. Someone, I'm sure. Don't know who makes it. E-fog. E-fog makes it, and it's called the gallop, and it's a little pod guy, and that is super random because my buddy Adam, I was just texting with my buddy Adam. Adam and uh, Adam and Flitz, I went to Amsterdam with them, and they're, and they're my good buds. And I was, we have a group text going. And just today, Adam's like, look at this new vape I got. It's called the Gallop. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? It's called the Gallop? What the crap? What is Gallop? All right, sure. Let's, it's whatever. It's the Gallop. That's fine. Maybe it'll vape good. You never know. You can't write it off completely just because of the name, even though that's kind of exactly what I did. Oh, never mind. Ooh, never mind. Okay, never mind. 
Never mind, never mind. This is a this is a gift. This is a Christmas gift. I wasn't sure. I thought it was mail. It's not. This is a Christmas gift for my wife. So I'm going to put it by her other Christmas gift for my wife. Yeah, it looks real familiar. Looks real familiar that gallop. I think I've used that gallop before. I've at least I've at least seen the gallop a bunch of different times in a bunch of different incarnations. Yeah, see this is from Amazon. So this is either going to be a Christmas gift for my wife or a Christmas gift for me from someone out there. Cut towards yourself always. That's just my new rule. Fuck it. YOLO. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Who's this from? Oh, God. Oh, God. Who's this from? Yep, yeah, Yvonne. Are you here, Yvonne? Thank you, Yvonne. I wanted to wish you and Casey a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope the gift makes you laugh. I also figured the chopsticks would help you in your future sushi. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what's funny is I had a pair of lightsaber. These are lightsaber chopsticks, and I had a pair of lightsaber chopsticks, and they died. Yeah, they died. I don't know what happened. Uh, they're just dead, but now pew, blue lightsaber chopsticks. <laughs> I'm going to eat sushi with these. Actually, you know, the ironic thing, though, is if you're a Jedi, you don't need chopsticks to eat sushi. You just go <laughs> float it into your mouth using the force. <laughs> like, I eat my sushi without chopsticks. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. There was something else in here. St wait, what? What is this? This is this is comedy, right? I'm guessing that this is comedy. Yeah, perfect. Uh, this is going to go on my bathroom door. St <laughs> Why? <laughs> Storm Pooper. Thank you, Yvonne. <laughs> I, I can't even think of a place on earth I want to put this sticker right now. I have no idea. Should I just put it on my car? Be like, whatever. I'm a Storm Pooper. That's something you're going to have to deal with, Storm Pooper. <laughs> Holy shit, that's hilarious. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to lose this flannel before we uh, before we get into that retro box because ugh, it's already warm af in here. All right. Am I going to get in trouble for showing this on YouTube? It's a U well. I got a pack and I got a package from U well, which look, I got I can't, I'm guessing, let's see. Made in China. Valerian UL Valerian on the inside? It can't be more Caliburn and Coco stuff. It just can't. And I already got their other new product, the Agloss. Agloss? UL. Look, I am available. You can hire me. I work for real cheap. All I'll do is name your products. We would have never landed on Agloss. 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 That would have never happened. Not on my watch. Agulos. Yeah, we're gonna well, we're gonna run a little bit long. What do we do? That's what we do on Thursdays, man. Thursdays we run long. That's what we do. Let's see. Let's see how well my prediction uh, turned out. All right. Oh, I was so close. The legend lives on. This is the UL Crown 5. Maybe I shouldn't be showing this. I don't want to get an email from UL tomorrow going, Hey, Grim Green, can you take down your whole vlog because you showed our tank that we're not supposed to show you yet? Slick packaging. Here's what I'm going to say. Slick packaging. Plastic. Ooh. Slick packaging, UL. Oh, shit. And I even opened a red one. Yeah, it's a crown. It's a crown sub tank, baby. Now, I have a, I have a, 
I have a complicated relationship with the crown sub tank. I got the first crown and I didn't really like it very much. And I was like, oh, this is kind of crappy. And then uh, Rip Trippers went on YouTube and was like, this is the best sub tank of all time. And I went, what, what, what? Okay, I'll give it another shot. Nope, still don't like it. Still don't like this tank. Then the Crown 2 came out. And again, people were like, <laughs> and I just went, oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I honestly thought the best UL tank was the Valerian. I was hoping for another Valerian in here. I really liked the Valerian. But unfortunately, or fortunately rather, we got some crowns and they got some spares. So you know what that means, $2 boxes. In fact, I'm putting together some $2 boxes currently for Christmas time for my yo yo cool kids. Uh, you're getting a lot of crap. You're getting a lot of you're getting a lot of crap. You're getting a lot of good shit too, but you're getting a lot of crap. Should we rave dance again with the lightsabers? No? Okay. We'll leave that we'll leave those to the side then. <laughs> we'll leave that to the side then. Nope. Where'd it go? I just want to see it. Look, I just want to see it. We've got a little bit of extra time. I just want to see what this gallop looks like. And I really want to take a picture of it and text it to my buddy. In fact, I might do that right now. Ready? We're going to text Adam. It's okay. This is just something that has to happen. Uh, just arrived. Ha, 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 ha. Because I'm clever. Just arrived. Ha, 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 ha. There you go. I got. Th they both use Androids too, which is annoying. Look, I'm not trying to start some Android versus Apple thing. Oh hell, that's not too bad. It's a pretty slick little thing. Let me guess. Magnetic tank, four mil capacity, sixty watts, internal, fifteen hundred ma, maybe a thousand milliamp hour battery. Let's see what the stats say. Nope. Uh, Gallup device, coil, USB cable. Really. Well, there you go. There's a gallop. It's actually pretty slick. It's kind of a slick little thing. I'm surprised that how slick this is. I was expecting just, you know, cruddy. I don't know. I set my expectations so low for most everything that when something comes and it's even like a little bit good or a little bit cool, I'm like, whoa, holy shit. That's amazing. This is, this is vaping amazing. This is the best vape I've ever had. When your expectations are nothing, everything surprises you. But that's it, damn it. That's mail done. Let's have some, uh, let's do, if there's any super chats that came in, we'll do those now. Otherwise, ooh, it's going to be time soon. It's time for retro vaping soon. Super chats, who cares? Let's do them. Frames, Gabe Claus, uh, Grim Green, number one in the North Pole. Thank you, Gabe. Yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate that, Gabe Claus. We're gonna, am I going to see you this uh, Christmas Eve or... Fishy, that's very great. Uh, hey, Nick, what style of bass do you enjoy playing? I Or have your gotta have list? Just curious. Uh, what style of bass do I enjoy? That's a good question, Fishy. We might need to save that for getting to know Grim Green. Here, uh, here's the thing. I play bass with a pick because I've always played in metal bands. I am dying to learn how to play bass with my fingers in sort of a slappy, plucky kind of way. I think that's a cool way to play bass, and I would love to just... I don't know. I hate, I've always hated using picks, but I play with a pick just like I said, cause I played in so many metal bands. Even when I was in like stoner rock bands, I still played with a pick because I like it just, uh, you can get it. You can pick. And I just like playing with a pick. Uh, I have a Thunderbird bass that I really like. I got a Washburn that I really, really like. I have a Dean flying V that I don't love so much. Um, I've been following a few new guitar companies. I can't remember their name on Instagram. And I also ran across my favorite new YouTuber. Go check out Does It Doom. Go on YouTube and go find Does It Doom. And he's my favorite new YouTuber. I'm trying to get in good with him. I don't know what we could collaborate on, but I just like this guy. I think he's a great YouTuber. Anyway, appreciate that. Thank you for those super chats. Now it's time. The time has come to say fast, fast. But so what? Oh, shut up, Cuomo. Let's do Retro Box 9. <laughs> okay, well, I can't leave that. I can't leave off that that super chat from Southern Comfort. Here's the thing. 
uh, he said, uh, Rip is an effing tool <laughs> who gives a chit what he thinks. You know, look, here's the thing. Yeah, Rip's Rip's fine. Rip's harmless. I don't care. Look, I, I've stopped caring about Rip Trippers. I used to really defend him. I used to defend Rip Trippers month after month after month after month. I would defend Rip Trippers. And then it came to a point this year where he quit and did. He's like, bye, guys. I'm done vaping. And he went and tried to do super bloke. And then now he's back vaping. And I'm like, cool. Like at this point, I don't care. You're back. You're not back. You're back. You're not back. Same thing with a lot of these. There's a lot of vapor viewers, man. They try to, they try to step out into some weird shit. They always come back. That's why you see vaping with twisted 420 still doing vape reviews. Is this even on? Oh, my battery's dead. Damn it. Only downside. Cruddy battery life. Let's get into this retro box, though. I don't know why. Now, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Michelle Lynn, you you could not be more correct. It's time to hydrate. Oh, I love water. I'm glad that I love water so much. It makes it easier to stay hydrated. Hydro homies. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if it says that this contains a paid sponsor, but it does. It's the coldest water. I have a link down in the description. This is literally my favorite water bottle of all time. And they happen to be a sponsor of the vlog. I have left this outside in the Los Angeles heat, direct sunlight for hours and hours and hours in the summertime. I'd fill it up with cold water. We'd go swimming for hours. We'd sit outside for hours. Every time I took a drink out of this, it was fresh, crispy, refreshing cold water. It keeps your water stupid cold. And I just like it. I just like having this much water. I like the flip top thing. And obviously it's an amazing palette for stickers. Remember that nicotine is not a crime. So anyway, that's my pitch for the coldest water bottle. I'll have a link down in the description if you want to buy one. You can buy one. You get a little, uh, you know, you get 10% off. I get a little jingle in my pocket. Works out well for everybody. Okay. Retro box number nine. I can't believe that this is about to happen. I don't know why I keep putting my knife away. Doesn't make much sense. Uh, but we're going to open this up. It's all, oh man, this is like 15 layers of tape on here. Whoa, okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, now this is labeled on the side here. Uh, which side? Uh, fuck me running. Oh, there it is. 20, oh yeah, 2016 mods. I don't know if you can see that. It just says 2016 mods, but my labeling ability is bad and I don't label things well or correctly at all. So this could be what the fuck ever. Who knows what's inside here? Who knows? Not me. Damn it, why did I put away that knife? Why do I do that? Who does that? Who does that? Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Holy crap. Wait, 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 wait. 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 We've gone through this box. We've gone through this box. Have we gone through this box? I definitely think we've gone through this box. Okay, I'm gonna pull something out here. <laughs> I'm just gonna pull it out. I'm gonna throw it on the table. You tell me if we've gone through this box before because I think we have. Does this look familiar? <laughs> we've seen this, right? We've seen this. We saw this box, the Grim Army Zombies box. Didn't we already see this? Do it again, that's what she said. We've already seen this box. Have we seen this box? Yes. No. We have not seen this box yet. I don't, I don't know. I can't remember if we've seen, could have seen it. Remember uh, this, we've definitely seen this, right? This is the, the anarchist uh, Aria built internal lipo DNA 250 uh, guy, DNA 100, 200 guy. Um, yeah, the, the, the old vapor sharks. Yeah, I got an old vapor shark. 
Super dead. Vapor Shark is in here. We've seen this box. All of it is familiar. All of this is familiar to you, Cope? Okay, what about this? Uh, Cherry Bomber? Much? Have we seen the Cherry Bomber? Cameron is saying yes, Chip's saying no. Have we seen the Black Dahlia Murder Cherry Bomber yet? This is a new box? Do it again? This is not a new box. I feel like we've seen this box before because look what's in here. Okay, first things first, fucking goodbye Dixon. <sighs> yeah. You gotta undo the button. You gotta undo the buttons every time you, you take off a Dixon, you see. Okay, two, have we done this box before? Okay, if I'm assuming, I'm gonna move forward with this like we haven't done it, okay? So let's look at this box that I just pulled out and put to the side. Um, this is a Draco Mods LLC PWM from 2013. Draco Mods. And they did this really like thick lacquer graphics on it. There's zombies and it says Grim Army. It says Grim Cult down the side. It says Grim Cult here. It's got my face. It's got some zombies. Clicky my tech switch. Now the... The coating that they use this, it's like a, a really drippy sort of painty type of coating. And you can see it like, can you see the coating around the button and like on the potentiometer here? It's all globbed up in a few places. I really liked this device. I really liked this. I really liked using it. I do have a cherry bomber as you saw with the GD Black Dahlia murder engraved on it. In fact, I feel like I should give this to a really big uh, Black Dahlia murder fan. Coil Turd's the only really big Black Dahlia murder fan I know, except I don't want him to blow himself up with a cherry bomber because these were notoriously, notoriously dangerous devices. Notoriously dangerous devices. So I'm going to leave that there. Rig Pig? We've seen a Rig Pig before, right? That's the series box that uh, James Rig Mod did. The Rig Pig. Maybe we haven't seen this box before. Did we see this custom Star Wars guy? Maybe I should leave this out. We've got this custom Star Wars box. Real squishy fire button. Not much to it. I think it was parallel. A parallel box. Yeah, parallel box. Man, I can't... Maybe we've just been doing this retro vaping so long, like for so many weeks... No, maybe we haven't seen inside this box because I have two uh, matchy matchy minikins right here. I bought a full blue one and a full black one literally just so I could swap the doors on the minikin. I used to really love these minikins like in a severe way. Severe way. That, that blue minikin is honestly pretty dope. I really liked the Minikins. I thought they were some of the better, like, regulated dual battery mods. In existence. Was the last Rig Pig Silver? Was the last... Yeah, see, Michelle Lynn's like, I feel like we've seen this before. Look, I don't know. I, there's some things in here that I see that I don't know if we've seen before. Holy shit! No, I don't think we've seen this before. Because here's a Segeli 213, and I thought I had lost all of these. I thought I had lost all of my Segeli 213s, and here is a Segeli 213. These things fucking ruled. No, we have not opened this box before. We have not. I'm pretty firm in that. Just DNA 75 aluminum box? The SD Mini 75 in like flesh color blue. Don't ever remember vaping or using that in any capacity. Boxception, retroception. Now we've seen, we've seen, so, so this is a copy. We've seen the cool fire before with the Grim Army, but not in silver. It was only in white before, I think. Th no. See, we haven't been through this because this is the pointy cult mod. We saw the other cult mod, but we didn't see the pointy cult mod. It was really weird. You had to hold it with your fingertips. You couldn't grab it because all of these edges are sharp as fuck. Like crazy sharp. 
So you had to like fingertips only, fingertips only, but it was a dual parallel unregulated. These were sick as tits. This one broke on me. This one actually broke. The switch died. Damn, I'd kind of like to get that working again. I took that to ECC in 2015. Oh, there's another cool fire. There is a mech mod from Raven's Moon Vapor. This is the manufacturer that works with Jay Hayes that did the Jenna RTA or the Jenna RDA rather. This was their mech that they were doing back in the day. Wasn't great, wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either. Single 18650 mech. Oh yeah, the sub ohm box. Okay, now I know for sure. You still have your Segeli 150, Sean? See, that's cool. I'm hoping to find a Segeli 150 in here. I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Kevin, yum. Does anybody remember this box? Vape like they're watching with the uh, pyramid on it. Grim Army on one side, vape like they're watching. This was the sub ohm box. And I forgot who made this. Someone, someone made this. And it, they were a big company for a while. Sub ohm box. Okay, I'm gonna have to think about who, who did the sub ohm box. Uh, original Relo? Nope, this is the Relo RX 2 3 that came out that uh, was dumb and you could change it from a dual to a triple 18650, except it was a pain in the ass. Wismack. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, there's a V200 there. This mech mod was another like pistol type of mech mod pistol grip type of mech mod it had a uh, slidey door on the bottom and the trigger the actual fire button mechanical by the way mechanical it's a bullet can you see that see the end of the bullet there that's kind of badass look at that on top it's like a six shooter on top bullet button bullet button that's cool dual parallel i don't know why why didn't i ever use this very much must have been a pain in the ass to take the batteries in and out. That's the only reason why I can think I haven't used this very much. It looks like three to four screws just to get the bottom off, and that kind of sucks. But what are you going to do? Uh, Fujin mech, a, uh, the only, uh, oh, the Jux from Continuous Current. I had a Jux brass mech mod from Continuous Current before, you know, this is when Amerivape and... A, you know, Amerivape became AV Life, and then one of the dudes from Amerivape left. The, you know, they used to vape drama, old vape drama. They be, part of the people became Continuous Current, and then Continuous Current became Duvo. Then remember, remember Duvo mech mods when they were still selling like, you know, five hundred dollar mech mods in two thousand seventeen. I got a black Relo. This is obviously not the DNA uh, 200 version, but I got a black Relo. I got a black dot mod Petri mech mod. This is an actual dot mod dot mod. Ooh, is there a battery in here? Holy shit, how stupid would that be? No, okay. It's not. It's just really heavy. This is stainless. I'm used to the dot mod stuff being all like aluminum, but this was actually a stainless steel OG dot mod Petri mech. Woo, that's a good one. Okay, another cool fire. I'm running out of space. Another Petri mech mod in blue. That looks pretty sick. I used to live and die for the Petris. I used to rock Petri mechs with Petri RDAs, and that was it. It was like the Petri and the Tugboat were my two vapes. Those, those are the only two things that I vaped were Petris and Tugboats. And now pumpkin. Three A is legit. What? Oh. Yep. And here's another continuous current Mac. I really loved this Mac. This was one of my favorite Macs of all time. I had two continuous current Macs, and they were basically the same thing. One was copper. One was aluminium. And I used to rock this Mac mod. What a great mech. Only 18650. I feel like this sh this could nowadays fit a 21700 with the size of it. But this was a great mech. Yeah, dude, Sean, I used to love old Dotmon stuff, bro. Loved old Dotmon stuff. 
This continuous current Mac, I used to take this with me most everywhere. I took this with, with me to Las Vegas a number of times, and I used to vape the uh, the bomb bombs drop bombshell bombshell RDA. This and the bombshell was amazing. It was my favorite, and yes, it was magnetic, and that was my favorite thing is I could walk up to like slot machines in Vegas or like a sit down like at a poker machine and I could stick this bunk switch down and it <coughs> <coughs> I don't know where that came from and I could put it switched down and it would just stay everywhere I put it and I loved it <laughs> magnetical that's cool as shit now this this is one of my most prized goddamned possessions and i wish with all my wishes that i kept the 510 for it and i wish with all my wishes that it was a gd 21700 but Rick, james from rig mod was one of he passed away a number of years ago rest in peace james god damn it and he was one of the most genuinely dope awesomely cool human beings that i had ever met he never asked for anything from me. He only asked what he could do for me. And in the vape world, that is such a genuinely unique character trait to have because people just want stuff from you. People just want stuff from you. If you think you're getting something for free, you are the currency. That's how it works. And James was one of those guys who was always just very gracious, very offering, very, do you want this to review? Do you want that to review? He'd, he'd text me and say, I'm driving down to San Diego to hand deliver you these two rig pig bo box mods. And he'd pull up in front of my apartment complex with his gigantic truck. He would just leave it running like in a fire zone. You know, he's like, ah, fuck it. Who cares? And we'd stand outside and bullshit. And he gave me some mechs and he's always been just so very gracious. And one of the things he did for me unasked, unasked was he made me a special blue rig mod. It's a special blue rig and it's hybrid with a, with a rig, you know, with a rig RDA on top. And unfortunately that's the threading. There's no 510 pin. So if I use this, I'm going to have to use the rig RDA and the rig RDA does kind of suck dildos. But this rig mech was one of my favorites and he customized it for me. I don't know if you guys can read that. It says Satan sub ohms, Satan sub ohms. That was like, my favorite thing. I just loved the crap out of that. I was like, James, that's too nice. That is too cool of you. And he made uh, six of these, I think. I think he made six Satan sub ohms rigs. And I have one of them. I don't know who has the other ones, but I have a Satan sub ohms custom rig. This is going to stay out. This is going to stay out because I feel like I need to build it. You know, even though the rig uh, V2 RDA was not good. Holy shit, I still have coils in here? Holy shit. Look at, these are parallel coils in here. This is parallel round wire in here. I haven't done a parallel round wire build probably since 2016, like when this went in the box. Holy shit. All right, I'm gonna leave this out. I wanna vape that. I'm gonna leave that out. I got a, uh, yeah, this thing was kind of a hunk of junk some sort of uh just minimal anarchist mech mod you gotta you guys gotta understand that like in 2015 and 2016 there were just billions of products on the market everybody had a mech everybody had a regulated everybody was releasing rdas and mechs and mechs and mechs and mechs and just everybody was doing mechs and it was like a quick thing you could do it's like well let's crank out a mech real quick and we can charge like 190 dollars for it you know so a lot of these are real samey. It's like, oh, here's another Mac. Oh, here's another Mac as well. Oh, actually, this is a roundhouse. That's a single 18650 black Cerakoted Kennedy roundhouse. You can tell because of the switch on the bottom. That was a good Mac. That was a good Mac. This thing, this thing, you remember that terrible squonker? I'm very confident now that this is a new, uh, this is a new box. Yeah, the Clone Wars, Eve, the Clone Wars. <laughs> That's all 2015 and 2016 was, was Clone Wars. 
remember like it was like a week ago or two weeks ago, three weeks ago now where I had that really bad flawless squonker and it was just a crap squonker with just a terrible design. I'm like, I never even used it because X, Y, Z. Well, they didn't stop there. They had, they released a series box that was this. At least I think this was a series box tugboat lightning on it purple and red lightning and on the inside it had those huge battery capture like things and a 40 amp fuse replaceable 40 amp fuse that goes into the middle of this safety right safety the problem is this doesn't charge externally and because of the three points of contact for both the top and the bottom batteries you had to use special batteries. I had to take uh, stickers or pieces of scotch tape and like wrap them around my batteries. So it gave me a little like tab so that I could pull the batteries out of this device. Cause I got it. I put two batteries in it. I'm just vaping it like crazy. And I go to change the batteries and I'm like, you know, you, you can't get in there with anything. You can't get in there with your fingers. You can't get in there with a screwdriver. You can get in there with nothing. It took me ages to get the batteries out of this. And I went, okay, well, fucking lesson learned. I'm going to have to use my special battery wraps, you know, with like put a piece of tape, you know, so you can grab it like Stan's head right here. There's something you can grab so you can get those batteries out of there. Man, it was super obnoxious. Yeah, Hooligan, Sean Hooligan, he was uh, he was doing mods for a while. He did the uh, DNA box, 21700 bot, or not 21700, 18650 box. Here it is. Woo! I am so happy now. I am so happy now. You know what I have in front of me? I got two noisy crickets, bro. This is the cult. This is the noisy cricket. I put my culture of cloud sticker on. This is a sort of brass noisy cricket. This had an upgraded switch and an upgraded 510 with uh, knurling on it. And it wasn't just a hybrid 510. I loved the noisy cricket loved god damn loved the noisy cricket do i have a series rda around here i can throw on this real quick nah nah shit my recoil rebels getting washed out okay well regardless i don't know which noisy cricket to keep out i think i'm going to keep out my original silver old school noisy cricket dude like <laughs> that tugboat looks like a, a Russian nuclear switchboard. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep silver one out. Silver one's staying out. I've been looking for some things, you know, I've been looking for things. There's a, wait, we're going to get rid of these. These are just boring, boring China stuff. Uh, this, you know, another dot mod, another F and Petri. That's it's what like eight Petri mech mods that I have. That's ridiculous. Another Petri. That was the full aluminum one. Red Cool Fire. Now this, this was my favorite. I loved this. Yes, the Atermon. The Atermon mech. So this was a, whoops. This was a single 18650 mech mod made in Greece, I believe. Beautiful. It's a beautiful mech, single 18650, and the button is this swirl right here. The button is the swirl, and it was just like a, you know, like you'd fire a Vamo or something, like a regulated button, but it was fully mechanical, and I just loved it. I would use it with RDAs. I would use it with my K-Fun all the time because you could hold it and hit the button with your thumb just like this. <sighs> it was awesome. Shit. All right. Well, I can't keep that out. I can't keep everything out. This was my favorite box for a really long time. And it was just a dumb little single dual 18650 regulated box. It's mostly plastic. Like this is plastic. Anybody remember the MX box? These uh, these doors that went on here were also plastic. If I could. Uh, oh, there it is. Open. It was just a plastic, literally all plastic. Everything's plastic C-frame with uh, leather doors, doors. They were like just a leather magnetic little wrap that you would like put over it, you know, and you put it on correctly. And I had a, a green one and a blue one and a white one. So you could, shit, 
throw a white one on there. That looks pretty boss. You could flip this off, put a red one on there. I really like this box mod for a number of, of, of months. That's what I'll say. At least a number of months. It definitely wasn't a number of years, but it could very well be a number of months. How did I, here you go. Boom. Yeah, now it's red. And I think that's a cool idea. It wasn't super durable or much, but I thought it was a cool idea. But that's not even, all right. Holy shit. All right. Well, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is a lot. Look, look how nicely these are all placed in here. It's kind of unbelievable. So uh what's in here let's get this out first because i'm gonna use this again because this is a kick-ass dual 18650 box mod this is the v god one of the first it's just stainless steel and carbon fiber but it's so cool it's a perfect little deck of cards sized box mod yeah sick boy plastic fantastic all day long all day long this v god on the other hand I loved the shit out of this thing. Dual 18650s, I bet the Type 2 would look way cool on that thing. It's almost the same size. Okay. Is the V-God box going to have to stay out? Damn it. Nugget? Fucking Nugget's staying out, that's for sure. Look at the, look how many uses we have for this little guy nowadays. You could run your uh, THC cartridges on them. Here's my original Relo. This is the original DNA Relo that I took with me to Ireland. I vaped this the whole time I was there. Every time I put it in my back pocket, all the, the weight of this and the weight of the batteries is just like, oh, like pulls your pants down just a little bit. Like not enough to really show anything fun, but like enough to annoy the crap out of you. Original Relo. That's what that was. I even had this customized, oh, liquid. There's liquid leaking from somewhere. Maybe not. I thought it feels like there's a little bit of liquid on here. Uh, custom Heath Ledger Joker Relo. Triple eighteen six fifty Joker Heath Ledger on the back. Why so serious? That's cool as fuck. Who doesn't love Batman? Who doesn't love the Joker? That's a boss Relo. That's Relo. That's a boss Relo. Cope, you're guessing five, 2,000 mods? <laughs> 2,000 might be, uh, that might be a little bit much. That might have gone a little bit hard in the paint. Oh, okay. There is liquid coming from somewhere. It can't possibly be this. Whoops. What the hell is this? Oh, this was the Ambassador 26650 mechanical mod. Holy shit, there's a build with co wet coils in here. What? <laughs> Holy shit. I left a build and wet cotton in this. That is insane. Wired talk with Big G. Your your Relo pulls your pants down too. Yeah. He used to do that to me constantly. Uh, no big deal. It's fine. It's whatever. I just left a build with liquid in here. And that's why everything at the bottom of this. That is kind of incredible. I'm kind of impressed. I'm kind of impressed that I, that I did that. That's ridiculous. This. Damn. Still no Segelis. I don't know where my Sigillis went. Um, this was kind of one of my pride and joy pieces. Even though it's got liquid on it, this was a rig. This was a rig V1? Ooh, old threads. This was a rig V1, but it was my favorite. I'm gonna try to get all this liquid off of here right now. Boosh, this was a beautiful rig, beautiful rig. Beautiful cap, beautiful. You can't even, there's like a very slight, like shine, sort of brassy texture to it. Uh, it's beautiful. It's black, black on top. This cap was made out of some ridiculous material that Kennedy used to use all the time. Can't remember what it's called. It's like that black, I can't remember. Can't remember. 
I wish I see. I still. I wish I could find my Segeli 100 watt Stan. I wish I could. This rig. Okay, this rig is gonna go down here. I have a little shelf over here uh, on my bookshelf where I just, it's whatever. I keep stuff there that uh, I, I like or am sentimental towards. This is a Lost Vape. Looks exactly like the Lost Vape stuff they've been releasing. Stuff. Oh, no, this is Think Vape. Okay, so this is the this is the Lost Vape clone. You want a Lost Vape clone? Tell me how much that looks like a Lost Vape product. Nope, it's a clone, bro. That's a clone of a Lost Vape made by, who did I just say? Findia, designed by Think Vape. This is the Findia 75. The Findia. Vape it if it's moist. It is moist, Mowgli. Here's the problem, though. I don't have any 26650 cells anywhere. I don't have any 26650 cells, and I don't have any... No, I have. I got no 26650 cells. I think I have one in my closet, but it is. They are definitely dead. Definitely dead. Can I put something else in there? No, no other battery dimensions. Rhodium. Yeah, there you go, big rig. Rhodium. That's a rhodium cap. Rhodium cap on that uh, on that rig. Rhodium. Lost vape clone. Uh, ooh, that's bad. That's bad. I'm glad I got this box out because this is bad. Does anybody remember uh, CM mods? They had this whole... Uh, C I am terrified of this. I have a bulging lipo. Does anybody know what to do? What I should do with a bulging lipo? Stab it? Am I supposed to stab it? I'm just kidding. I know you're not supposed to do that. Never stab a lipo. I have a bulging, puffy lipo battery inside of this box mod. They had this whole thing where, oh, it's like build your own mod. Like you'd go to their website and you'd pick out your doors and you'd pick out your plastic and you'd pick out your hardware and you'd pick out your buttons and you'd kind of, you know, it would come with some stuff assembled and you could disassemble it and you could swap these out to be different colors even though they were like screwed on there permanently and you could swap out the buttons and things like that. But now I'm never going to use this again because it's got a puffy, puffy lipo. Yeah, recycle it. No, don't set it on fire, Sean. What are you crazy? Nobody listen to Sean. Everybody ignore Sean Geek Vapor in the chat. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, I'm going to go. I don't know. Uh, after the vlog, I'll take this outside. It's just been sitting in my closet. But it is puffy. So I'm going to take this to... Uh, Best Buy or something and say, hey, this is a puffy battery. We're like, what is that? And we're like, it's an e-cigarette. Like, what the fuck? I don't want to end up on the news. All right, cool. Well, there's one puffy lipo. We're getting down to the bottom here. Uh, an original Suric. Yeah, the original Suric that I had. I don't, couldn't tell if I liked this thing or not. Um, the one thing that annoyed me tremendously about this Surek, it looks cool as fuck. I like those X's on the doors. I think that's baller. I think that is uh, legit. Stick your tongue to it, Nick. Look, I know we share the same name, Nick, but that's where this ends. I'm not gonna stick. <laughs> I'm not gonna stick my tongue. Actually, I don't think he would even do anything. Look, I'll lick it. Who cares? I licked a puffy lipo. It's the worst thing I've ever done. Suric X, up down buttons were above the fire button, which I always thought was weird because I'd always go here to fire it. Anyway, doesn't much matter. 510 on top, and there was an LED right here that when you press the button, that LED just shined right in your face. And if it was fully charged, it's like green light right in your face. And when it's dying, it's like yellow light right in your face. And then when it's red, it's like red light right in your face. And there was nothing you could do about it. That's just where he put the button. It's just where he put the button. Kind of want to give this another shot. Uh, this legitimately felt like it had batteries in it, but this is just an Asmodus mech unregulated blue box from Asmodus back in the day. You know, they tried to make the inside nice and fancy, and it's got a big, uh, it's got a big piece of contact, you know, going up the back. It's just basically covered with, with plexi. It's like plexi. And here's your big contacts, and then there's your, nope, unmechanical switch, 
with no MOSFET. So this was just a big problem waiting to happen. When this switch fails, your RDA is going to fire, your batteries are going to drain. Well, I don't know why we didn't put MOSFETs on everything back in the day, but we didn't, Michelle. We didn't. <laughs> we just didn't. Yeah, Scott, I was thinking about that, like putting uh, electrical tape over it. I don't know. Who knows? Oh, I have a red noisy cricket. Oh, shit. Maybe this is the one I'll keep out because it's Christmas red time. Can only fit a 24 millimeter on here, though. All right, we're leaving two out. Two noisy crickets. I can't believe I found them. See, we're getting down here to the end. Oh, this was a Cloud Kicker Society device. I really liked this thing. It was uh, like swirly acrylic before swirly acrylic was really, really popular. And you could see the golden tube. Single battery. Used to run my K-Funds on it. Little fire button. Those were really cool. Oh, shit, yeah. So this is the, uh, this is the darker black version of the... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to put the batteries in. I think. I think. <gasps> Wait. Do I not have any 18650s? These are all 2700s. That's crazy. That's banana cakes. Okay, that goes there. That goes there. Yes. Praxis. Siggu. Remember this screen, the resistance, your battery, your ohms. And it would disappear after you fired it. You know, yeah, it's questioning my resistance right now. I love this screen. I want more menu manufacturers and vendors and everybody to do, do a screen like this. I'm going to do a screen like this. That's it. I'm stealing it. I don't even care. I'm stealing it. <laughs> I love that screen so much. Uh, two things left. That's it. These are the last two mods. Still have not found any Segeli stuff in here. No Segeli 150, no Segeli 200. I had both of them. I wonder if they're in Pickle's box. See, Pickle took a box of vape gear that she's like, this is my sentimental box of vape gear. She might have both of the effing Segelis in there. Son of a bitch. Anybody remember Limitless when they came out with the really jagged pointy box mod? It wasn't too bad of a box. It just had these acrylic doors, limitless, limitless, shiny screen, like a reflective screen on it. The button isn't here like you thought it would be. No, it's down here. And uh, overall, this was just hyper uncomfortable to hold. Hyper uncomfortable to hold. I like the Limitless stuff to an extent, but this box mod was just uncomfortable. I wish I could find... Have we seen any of my Limitless mechs yet? You guys, I need your help. <laughs> I need your help, Rhett. <laughs> Have we seen any of my Limitless mech mods yet? I don't think so. I don't think so. There could still be a missing box somewhere. Although I don't think so. Okay, so then lastly, lastly... Can I even put a battery in here? Can I put some batteries in here? Oh, this. There was a, com I don't even remember what the mod underneath is though. That's the problem. I don't remember what the mod is underneath, but there was a company for a while in the vape world called Wood, W-U-D, Wood. Wood. Does anybody remember Wood? One Mac? Was there one Mac in there, Addy Tooney? Okay. I appreciate that. It's okay, Red Falls. I didn't expect you to know the answer. That's, that's too much pressure. I shouldn't have put, put that much pressure on you. Yeah, Nick, Limitless was really known. I mean, besides their Macs, their RDTAs were like, everyone had a Limitless RDTA. Everyone had a Limitless RDTA. But there was a company in the industry called Wood. W-U-D wood could be an e-leaf under here stan now that i think about it but they sold wood skins for devices i think i mean stan could be right this could be an e-leaf under here but it's not even it's not a sticker i mean it is a sticker but it's actual it's actual wood they were thick wooden like 3m sticky on one side and you'd put it on your mod and there and you know it was like cut 
so that you could bend it. You know, the, the, the wood has like slits cut into it so that you could bend it around, you know, mods and like bend it around the front. And you just put wooden skins on your mods. And uh, I thought they were really, really cool. They're really, really expensive, but I wanted, I don't know, I guess I wanted an E-Leaf mod to be wooden. Some of them was easier than others to get these wood skins on, you know? Like if you had a lot of, hard edges that was easy rounded edges not so much and then they made them they made these skins for really confusing mods like they sent me a whole mess of these wood skins and they're like here's the wood skin for your relo and i'm like what how do you even apply this so this relo had a wood skin on it for a while and then i had to take a heat gun and uh get the wood skin off of there and it took me fucking days to get that shit off i don't know whatever 3m adhesive they used but it was it must be what they used to hold the goddamn uh space shuttle together because i couldn't for the life of me with a heat gun it took me forever and just scraping and scraping and scraping and then it would leave like stickiness behind so i'm, I'm sitting there with like you know goo gone on a paper towel like trying to get all the very last little sticky bits of this wood skin off of my device. And I thought, wow, that sucks. <laughs> that really bums me out. I mean, I guess if you get it, you get it to leave it on there permanently, right? Permanently. I'm going to start placing these back in here. I'm going to leave the Black Dahlia murder out because I might just send that to Coil Turd just so he has it. We're going to put all this stuff back in here. As nicely and neatly as we... Ah! Oh, there goes that. Bye, Petries. I'm sure you liked being mech mods. Yeah, I'm going to get all the mech mods together. Eventually, like, not necessarily for a retro vaping, but I need to show you the collection of mechs that I keep out. It's probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times one, two, three, four, five. What's seven times seven? That's how many mech mods I have like sitting out on my shelf as like a, you know, for lack of a better term, collection of like current modern mechs that I that I really, really like that kind of hang out down here. I have to show you guys those. So you can see like, oh, what do I got up there? Here, let's use this. Oh, good. Padding. That's what we needed. You're going away, you damn minikins, you're going away, you're going away, all you fuckers. You're going away, you're going away. Dang, there was a lot in this box. Vape like they're watching. I actually sent one of these uh, to, what was the name of the company that made this box? I sent one to my brother. They used to do uh, sub-ohm cells. Everybody remember sub-ohm cells? And they look like Duracells. And, you know, uh, it turns out that they were just cruddy Chinese batteries and sub ohm cell was saying like, oh, these are like, seriously, these are like 45 amp single 18650s. You can run like a 0 0.004 on this battery and it will still, it's got a high amp limit. And then it turns out that no, they don't. No, they don't. And you're just lying and telling people that they do and they don't. And you don't have a special like battery factory in China, like you've been telling everybody, you buy these like everybody else and you're rewrapping them. Sub ohm cells, sub ohm cells. And then this, the E-Leaf, the E-Leaf Eye Care Mini. I guess I'll put you back in here. I have no desire to ever use you or vape you ever again. Okay, so what are we leaving out? All right, not this. We're leaving out two noisy crickets and Beecher's Christmas present. I'm just going to send that to him with no note or nothing. No return address. I'm just going to say enjoy it. Don't blow your head off. Oh, shit. I got to put these back. Okay. Dang, Retro Box 9. Woo! That was too much. That was too much. Sean... That was too much. No, it's not. It's never too much. I could go through a gigantic box of retro vapes. I just hate spending so much time on each one. I'm like, so here's the story behind this mech mod. And here's how I used to really like using it. And here's the batteries I used to use in it. <laughs> I feel like you guys are like, get on with it. Anyway, 
That's it. That's box nine, you guys. We've come to the almost damn near the end of the retro vaping boxes. There is one box left, and it is the tackle box. And the tackle box is really the treasure trove of just the most ridiculous vape shit that looking back at it, you know, you think, how did I quit smoking with this? How? (laughs) How is that even possible? How did I do it, man? How did I do it? I still don't know. To this day, I look back at some of that old technology and I'm like, we vaped this? Like at one point, this was my favorite vape. That's incredible to me. That's incredible to me. Ah, but now, all you need is a Cali burn. All you need is a type two. All you need is a noisy cricket. I'm excited for the noisy cricket. I'm gonna put some series coils on here. I know where I have some series coils. Oh. Ooh, pardon me. Really very excited about that noisy cricket. Well, shit. Well, we're down. Damn, we're down to the end. This is it, you guys. I don't have a getting to know Grim Green this week, although next week I'm going to play you some very vintage choice. Actually, you know what? No, we can't do that. We can't do that tonight. We'll do that next week. Next week, I'm going to play you guys some really old, uh, some of my really old Christian death metal. It's awesome. Uh, it's, in a, it's a band I was in for... Uh, I don't even know, 11 years, 10 years or something like this. But what I want to do right now is, like the title says, I have an e-liquid from Australia that I would like to vape. But first, real quick, let's do any super chats if they came in. That's it. We're already running long. I can't uh, I can't afford any bumpers. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Southern Comfort. Sean, that's very gracious of you. Grim, with the Caliburn G, do you use salt or freebase liquid? Also, does yours leak if you use salt or not with freebase? No. Uh, I have only had one pod link leak, and it was, I don't use salt. I just, I exclusively use non-salt nicotine. I don't really like the term freebase. I like suspended, like normal nicotine. That's what I use. Um, I had one bunk coil head that just, I put one drop to prime it. I put it in, I filled it up. I took like three or four pulls off of it. I'm like, great, new Caliburn G coil head. And I set it down and I went, you know, whatever, ate dinner, came back and it had emptied itself into my battery. But that's the one and only time I ever had an issue with the Caliburn G pods. Doesn't matter if you use salt nick or regular nick. Um, regular nick tends to come in a little bit higher of a VG, so that could be a thing. Tur- I will say Turks Turkish blend. You know his custard and his harvest in the twelve milligrams they work flawlessly in the Caliburn stuff. Flawlessly, Sean. Um, Southern Comfort. After month two, I would have been done with that dork. Look, I know. Here's the thing. I just I I felt like I needed to defend him and I can't I can't explain it. I just felt like I needed to defend him. I felt like Rip was constantly getting the short end of the stick. Rip was constantly just getting shit on by everybody. And so I felt the need to defend him. Uh and I don't anymore and that's okay. Uh Rob, that's very gracious of you. I'm a little late but I'm here. Cheers, Nick. Rob. How could you? Uh, that's not a little late. You showed up at 5.42 p.m., Rob. Let's try to get here on time next week. I'm going to have a punch card for you, Rob. <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. Um, Dragon, thank you for being here. It's a new box, but some of the mods have been done on past retro vapes. I know for sure. Yeah, the Araya Anarchist Solara. Yes, that's what threw me off. I have the black one and a green one. Maybe I have two green ones. New box. Anyway, I appreciate your feedback there, Dragon D's Nuts. <laughs> uh, big Rig, uh, I'll trade you some rig stuff for the Joker RX. <sighs> Here's the thing, Big Rig. No. I don't want any more rig stuff. I have a lot of rig stuff. I, I was I, I knew James. He gave me all sorts of rig stuff. I've got rig stuff. I've got rig, rig stuff coming out of my ears. So I'm down for, look, we're not doing any trading right now. I'm trying to wrap up the rest of the trades that I got going on right now. And then maybe like at the start of the new year, I'll, we'll open it back up to trades again, but keep an eye on what you keep an eye on. And I'm, I'm down for trading. I'll even trade like whatever, like non vape stuff, star Wars stuff, star Trek stuff, superhero shit, whatever. 
interesting things. You have a, if you have like a, like a, like a, a marmot skull, I would trade for that. That's what I'm in the market for. <laughs> Southern Comfort. Uh, I have that mod with the big screen on the side. If you change the screen a few times, it literally says F you, but unedited. Yes. Yes. It does do that. It does do that. Is that. You're talking about the one, the Paraxis with the lights on the side? Yeah. Yep. Southern Comfort is not wrong. Sick boy. Na, 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 na. Sick boy. Oh, way, oh. Happy brother, Addy Tooney? Wait, what? Is it your birthday, Addy Tooney? I'm going to need confirmation before this vlog can go any further. Yeah, cope. We did a digital trend, buddy. Digital trend. Digital trade, sorry. Is it your birthday, Addy Tooney? Tell me if it's your birthday because I'm, I'm about to sing happy birthday to you whether you want me to or not. Uh, Southern Comfort, building the intake MTL. Hope it's awesome. Ether, let me know what you think, Southern Comfort. Please let me know what you think. I'm dying to know what you think. I still haven't got the ether back out. Type, the, the intake MTL is pretty dope. Is pretty dope. Holy shit. Addy, 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 Addy. Oh, we're all going to sing happy birthday to the, you know, the pillar of this community, just a staple in this community, Addie Tooney. How do we not sing happy birthday to Addie Tooney? Okay, ready? You guys ready here? Let me get my... Uh... Happy birthday to Addie Tooney. Happy birthday to Addie Tooney. Happy birthday to Addie Tooney. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Holy shit, Addie Tooney, happy birthday. I didn't, how did I, how did you not just tell me that it was your birthday, bro? You know, cha-cha-cha, you know we sing happy birthday here, damn it. Addie Tooney, happy birthday. I hope your day has been fan-fucking-tastic. I'm going to send you a gift. I'm going to send you a birthday gift. I'm going to send you a birthday Christmas gift, Addie Tooney. I appreciate everything you do, not just for me, and you do a lot for me, Addie Tooney. I appreciate what you do for all of us. I appreciate what you do for all the industry, all of the community. You're a moderator with so many streamers. You always post the links. You're always very generous. You're just down for the cause. You're an advocate on Twitter. I can't think of someone else that I want to be more like than Addie Tooney. Happy birthday, Addie Tooney. Happy birthday, bro. All right, let's uh, let's round. Uh, let's uh, let's just whatever. Let's end this vlog. Let's do some. Uh, if I can find the button on my thing. Nope, can't find the button on my thing. Why can I never find anything? Okay, it's actually not on here. Oh yeah, it is. Hi. Okay, that's it. That's all you get. That's, that's too much metal for one person. So the, the little panic attack I had before... Uh, before I started the stream, I, I getting everything ready. Like I spend all day prepping the stream. It's just a, I don't know, it's a labor of love. It's a task. I like throwing things in there and being like, all right, we got this, we got this. I'm going to do this. We got news. We got this. And I'm going to throw this in there. We're going to do this. And we're going to, you know, it's fun. I have a lot of fun doing it. And I get all like, you know, amped, you know, before we stream. It's like, I feel like I'm about to speak in front of a large group of people. Like I'm about to walk out on stage and sing or something like it's this nerve wracking sort of like anticipation that happens. And so I'm sitting down here, hang on beer. So I'm sitting down here and I'm feeling good. I'm like, tonight is going to be a great vlog. I got everything. I have these things and I'm going to do the other thing. And I got this box and I'm going to do this and it's going to be great. And I'm sitting here in my head going over like that mental sort of checklist in your head. And I went, yeah, and I got this and I got that and I got a liquid tasting. I went, cool. So I'm just sitting here doing, I got everything. So I'm chatting with people in the chat, you know, it's counting down. There's like, uh, you know, 30 seconds left. And I realize I, do, I don't have anything to actually do the very random liquid tasting on. And that sent me into panic mode because then I instantly thought, oh my God, I don't, 
I'm going to have to clean out an RDA. I'm going to have to clean out an RDA. I don't have a clean RDA. So I grab an RDA. I'm like, run to the bathroom. I'm like, I'm going to have to clean this out real quick. And I have to try to wake it really quick. And then, so I run to the bathroom. And then in the bathroom, I see that I have a Turk V2 RDA just sitting there with a build in it and no wicks. And I'm like, oh, so I grab it and I come in here. And literally what I was doing before, before I said, hello and welcome, welcome in hello was pushing cotton bacon through these coils. So that's it. That's my big panic moment was that I didn't have anything for this. And so that's why we have to sit here now and I have to finish, finish the Wiccans, finish the Wiccans. So we're going to be vaping a a liquid tonight from Australia. As it says in the title, I had a liquid from Australia that I was inspired recently to try. This has been sitting, I have a little shelf inside my closet. It's a little secret shelf. You guys don't need to know about it. I have a little secret shelf inside of my inside of my closet where there's liquids that are just these are liquids that I really want to taste but I'm saving them for this moment for this for this very random liquid tasting. Tonight, what's that say? Can you see it? That's another little that little display stand. Frank and Atticus. This is from Australia, which Next week on the vlog, we might have a little bit of Australia news because Australia, believe it or not, they still it still sucks for vaping in there. Still sucks for vaping. But yeah, I'm a, this is all finished cottoning. It's been wicked. This is Frank and Atticus from Australia. And wait till you hear the name of this. How bad do you want to vape this juice after you hear this name? Apple, right? Oh, do I have your attention now? Apple and rhubarb macaroon, bro. Apple and rhubarb macaroon? How badly do you want to vape this juice? I have to vape it upside down. I have to vape standing on my head, right? That's what I have to do because it's Australia. Let's give it a knuckle test. Mm. Oh my God. If this liquid is good, I'm going to be happy but I'm also going to be pissed because it's from Australia, damn it. And I can't, <laughs> I can't get it. I mean, I'm sure I could, right? I mean, Bogan's in Australia and he gets stuff from all over the world. He gets stuff from the United States constantly. So I see no reason why I can't, uh, I can't make an order from Australia. It's, it's either Australia or New Zealand. I legitimately don't know. I thought it was an Australian e-liquid company because the website is .au and that's Australia, right? 70 VG, three milligram, apple, rhubarb, macaroon, apple, okay, apple, rhubarb, macaroon, this is on the uh, method one mech mod, which may be getting a review very soon, and like I said, Turk V2 RDA on top, with what I'm assuming are some Turk coils in there, I got that special edition sort of, uh, you know, Cap, I think that is a dope, dope, dope and a half looking setup, personally. Personally. Let's try it. Uh, let me have a let me have my first uh, sort of inaugural toot here, as it were. Cheers. Yeah, okay. So What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit with this liquid for just one hot second. I realize we are actually running a little bit long tonight, and I thought we were going to get it. Macaroon. Mac. Okay, so I say macaroon, but it's not macaroon, right, Joshua? It's Macron. French pronunciation. Macron. Macron. It's It's the pastry, the patisserie. Macron. I'm just going to sit with this just for one hot second. And then I'm going to come back uh, and we'll talk about it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kill my mic. It's just going to go away.
that had a dead battery. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this is. God damn it, Frank and Atticus. God damn it, Frank and Atticus. Uh, delicious. Pure, pure, beautiful. Pure, beautiful, beautiful e liquid. Apple, rhubarb, macron. So here's what I'm getting from it. Right out of the gate. It's apple overload. It reminds me of that jungle juice that I vaped for a really long time. Apple, I get a really strong, crispy, fresh red apple, red apple. Could be some some green, you know, I'm not saying that when they were mixing the e-liquid, they just only put red apple in there. It's like, no, nah, there's probably some red apple, some green apple, some sort of mixture of apples, but the apple flavor in this, stellar. The rhubarb, Oh my God, the rhubarb reminds me kind of of Pony on Acid. And I only say that because when I vape certain liquids, and Pony on Acid is one of them, when I vape certain liquids, I can kind of, I pull up this little mental picture of what it is I'm tasting in my head. You know, I just picture it. And whenever I vape Pony on Acid, I always picture like a slice of like strawberry jelly glaze, like a square of it, like a strawberry jelly glaze. And then you just go, you just eat it like jello. You know, it's like strawberry jelly glaze sitting on a, on a gray table. That's what I picture in my head. That like glaze. That's what I picture when I eat, when I eat pony on acid, when I vape pony on acid, you know, and it's, it's like that with a lot of liquids. I'll like picture in my head, like when I vape this pumpkin AF, I picture pumpkin flavored frosting on those sugar cookies. It's like sugar cookie with the pumpkin frosting. I picture that in my head when I'm taste when I'm tasting it in my head, when I vape this, I picture rhubarb jelly, like just the jelly rhubarb portion of the center of like a French Macron cookie, not the crusty cookie part, just the gel goo in the middle. It's creamy. It's gel gooey. It's sweet apple rhubarb. It's incredible. This is, this is straight up an incredible e-liquid. Holy fuck butts. There's no like bakery component to it so that you're not getting any crust or pastry or graham cracker or anything like that. There's none of these like lower bakery undertones for all intents and purposes. This apple rhubarb macaron cookie is a fruit flavor. Opaque jellification, Scott. That's what I picture. I picture <laughs> I picture rhubarb as like an opaque jelly sitting on top of 
just a pile of apples. The pile of apples is next to the pile of science that we have for vaping, but big pile of apples. And then you took like a squeezy bottle. Like, you know how some sour cream comes in like a squeezy tube like that. Like you just went with rhubarb jelly, like soft jelly that you smear on your face. That's what this tastes like. Rhubarb jelly smeared on your face. It's delicious. This is delicious. If you have even a passing interest in the flavors of apple and rhubarb, I could not recommend this enough. Could not recommend this enough. Frank and Atticus out of Australia. I picked this up when I was at the Oceana Expo in uh, Auckland, New Zealand. And uh, I, I wish I had kept more of the Frank and Atticus liquids. I would like to try them all right now at the same time. Maybe not at the same time, right now. Run, run, don't walk. This is one of my, this is a banger, you guys. <laughs> I mean, like, look, I like the pump Turk, Turk pumpkin. It's legitimately awesome. I like own boys mango. I do gush about some liquids every now and then. But this Franken Atticus, I love it. I love it. I can't get enough of it. Holy crap, that's good. All right, well, damn, we're ending the vlog on a real high note tonight. A real high note tonight. It's sweet. It's not too sweet. I have a feeling that maybe over the course of like, a week or two, you're gonna get some. You, you're gonna have some 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 dark coils. But for right now, I don't give an f. Anyway, uh, I think were there any more super chats that happened right there? Uh, intake. Okay, we got an update. Uh, low, nope. Southern Comfort. An actual rhubarb plant tastes like grass. Add sugar. Yeah, actual rhubarb, like the plant itself. It's like. Nothing. It tastes like earth. It tastes like celery, kind of. But even celery has a little bit more flavor. Sugar is really what brings rhubarb to life. Apple, rhubarb, macaron cookie. Son of a bitch. Oh, you want to see the liquid? Okay. Here's the liquid bottle label. This is a request from uh, someone in the chat. The chat's passed now, so I can't give them proper credit. Frank and Atticus. Check it out. Frank and Atticus out of Australia. Check it out. All right. Well, we're basically done here, you guys. Let me take one quick look around the room with my lightsabers. Uh, just air drums? All right. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good with everything. I think we're good with everything. Now it's just time for me to continue working. I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna turn this into a podcast. We're gonna get those timestamps. We're gonna get those links. This is gonna be a fully functioning vlog very soon, but here's what I'll say. Frank and Atticus killed it. I don't know who Frank and Atticus are. I've never met someone named Atticus before, but I wanna meet Atticus. I wanna high five. I wanna, I wanna give him a Frames Janklin crispy high five. Because GD, that's been the highlight. Let me finish this off. All right, that's it. We're done with the vlog, you guys. Cheers. Thank you so much for coming out. You know, I say this every week, but I love the vlog. And I love that you guys are here. And I love that you love the vlog. And I like that we get to all hang out together and goof off and just have fun. Um, everyone hit that like button. Smash it. Destroy. Just break your computer. Pour beer on your monitor. That's what I want. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But thank you guys seriously so much for coming out. If you could hit that like button, that would really help me out a lot in the YouTube world. It's cutthroat out there. There are a lot of options on YouTube. And I appreciate you guys spending your Thursday evenings uh, with me. And I like that we can hang out. And I'm just feeling, I don't know, maybe it's winter. Maybe it's holiday cheer. Maybe it's, you know, whatever. 
I'm just feeling warm and gushy on the inside, and I just want to send you guys some love. Appreciate you into the ground, and I appreciate you guys being here. If I ever get the chance to meet any of you IRL in real life, like frames, I do dispense crispy, crispy high fives, as well as, uh, you know, we can go in for the full, like, uh, you know, full hug there. We can do that too. So we'll get back to normal eventually, you guys. But for now, look, we can all, we can all hang out here, right? I owe you a monitor. I'm sorry. <laughs> and Frankie, it's fine that you're late because you're going to be watching the replay. Anyway, appreciate you guys being here. Thank you seriously so much for watching. Remember that no matter what any other living human on earth tells you, vaping is at least 95% less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, you guys, no matter what's in your hand, no matter what is in your hand, let's keep on vaping, you guys, okay? Be excellent to each other, everybody. Peace. I'll get you that uh, monitor in the mail there, uh, uh, worm. Peace. Oh, shit, look at that. Frozen. Frozen. <laughs>